I've got some examples here of Rembrandt lighting. These are just images I downloaded today from Google. There's a key element in Rembrandt lighting. The trick is it's pointing to it there. See, see this triangle of light here? Under the eye. Yeah. Now, it's not just a triangle of light. The cheek shadow here meets the nose shadow. There's no gap. You get this pure triangle. There's an image here I downloaded that explains it. So you have the main light on one side of the face. This is also called a glancing light. So it's not directly on the figure. It's actually the edge of the light beam that is pretty much hitting the figure. The eye is illuminated with a small triangle of light on the cheek. So we see that there, right? And the nose shadow connects with the cheek shadow to create the triangle of light on the upper cheek. When you, when you don't have that connection, you see a very distinct nose shadow. Yes, oh, indeed, yes. But when be. you do have the connection, it becomes indistinct. Instead of focusing on the distinct nose shadow, you focus on the eye. So we have this triangle of light here. Now that is created by, I've called it a soft Rembrandt light here. Okay, so if we look in the top view, we can see that it's almost this oh. one here. It's almost the side light. The center of the cone is pointing at her ear. So it's really this front half of the cone here that is lighting the subject, right? What's the height? If you look straight from the front, where in regards to height is that? Uh, 76 degrees. Gotcha. I seem to remember uh, hearing that somewhere that Rembrandt used to paint in an attic and the attic had a slightly slanted roof and there was one window in the attic. And during the sunlight hours, this is the light that he got. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, I heard how... that too. Yeah, yeah. So his models were kind of naturally illuminated like that and he loved the style and that's just his signature i guess so so we turn everything off that is interfering with it now you see you can see it clear now T turn off the rim light cool it's good to see so in this uh, setup it's not just one light source maybe it was in rembrandt studio but in to yeah there we go so we have a there, little bit there, of there's one light source gotcha yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 now obviously rembrandt studio would have had light bouncing around and filling in the shadows quite naturally on, on, indeed on the dark side you know but we don't have that i'll sh show you later how to add in a geometry plane to bounce the light into the shadows now the the light itself it's got the spread angle is, is fairly wide it's not terribly wide that's the width of the light and then i i believe i'm not 100 percent sure what the beam exponent actually means but i think it's the center beam, how bright that center beam actually is. And it's a rectangular light, so it's a softbox. It's like a photographic softbox light. I mean, if I change that to a point light. Mm. We'll see very different effects. It's, yeah. very, it's very different. Or if I change it to a sphere, that's a bit better, cylinder. Yeah, they're, interesting. They're, they're all they're, they're all pretty good. But you see, with, with, with the rectangle, it, it's really nice because you can mm. emulate an actual studio light. I assume the sphere light is, is like a bulb. It is. So what this changes is the actual geometry of where the light comes from. So in iRay, everything yeah. is a mesh light. So you can create a primitive and put an emissive shader on it. But that has disadvantages as we've recently seen. So what iRay has built in are these light objects and a spotlight, a point light, they start out as a single pixel of geometry. And mm. that's where the light comes from but you can easily change that and hence the spotlight and the point light they're so powerful because you can turn a spotlight both into a soft box or a really strong point that just has super harsh shadows the larger that geometry is automatically the softer the shadows are that the light creates yeah i'm not sure what the measurement here i've got in that studio but i think the default on the spotlight is 10 on the height and width. Yes. It's a lot harder, you and know. The, the smaller you make that rectangle, it's still the same amount of light that comes from the same surface, but because it's much smaller, it now goes and creates these harsher shadows. So and it's the, more concentrated, yeah. Exactly. So the more the larger you make that, the, you don't really lose light. It's just being spread out on a larger surface, and that then makes shadows softer and softer. We were talking about temperature 
in DAS Studio, the default is set to 6500K, yeah, which is basically overcast, which is really, <laughs> really nice color temperature. So the higher you go on the dial on the color temperature, Kelvin, the cooler the light gets. And the lower you go, the warmer the light gets. So 6500, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So that's midway. Mm -hmm. Now, just for this particular render, if I was to turn that all the way up, that kind of looks like window light now. Yes, it's almost, we were, dis we were discussing this in the beginning, weren't we? This is kind of more your look. This is what you'd like to yeah. achieve, less less warm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that kind of, you know, natural daylight, window light look personally. So we we're talking about controllers. You can just see the outline of, of a cube here. That is the controller prop. So in order to change the lighting, instead of selecting the light, I would select the controller prop. And I have this dial here, light rotate. I turn that That's instead of turning, instead of turning the light. That is okay. a clever way of doing this in the center of where the figure is. There's going to be yeah. the light parented to it shining at that. And the moment you turn the parent, the child kind of rotates with it, but you don't have to worry about having the lights manually point at a portion of the character. It's just this distance. It's kind of a spring arm, essentially, that you just rotate around from the center. That's yeah. clever. And if you notice there, we've lost the Rembrandt look and we have this yes. this ugly shadow here coming on the nose. Putting look it how back. unflattering this is. If you look at the upper lip and you get you really accentuate that that bit on yeah. her face and how unflattering that is. It's the same light, the same light quality. It's the same height of the light, but it's a very different look that she gets. Very yeah, good if you put it, If you put it back, it, all, it all automatically removes it and it becomes much more flattering. It's like a completely now, different personality on the model, isn't it? Yeah, and the X-Rotate will bring the light up and down. Mm -hmm. That's like doing uh, this with the spring arm now. The Z-Rotate will do, will, will do stuff as well, but Often it's quite ugly. It's kind of more horror lighting now, you know. I always put the lights on a controller. And I think about 90% of the lights in all the render studios are all on a controller. Or there's the option to have them on a controller or not. So, yeah, so that, that's the basic light in uh, Rembrandt light. And then there's um, specular light for the eye highlights. Oh, that's a separate light that you put in. Excellent. Obviously, the Rembrandt light is almost a side light. So it's not really shining in her eyes. So you're not getting that specular reflection from indeed. the Rembrandt light. Not naturally anyway, indeed. There's plenty of specular lights in the render studios, but you have to be quite careful when setting these up because they do still add light to the scene. I have it set to specular only. Obviously, it's it's illuminating the specular parts of her skin as well as the eyes. It's adding luminosity to to the rest of her mm -hmm. as opposed to just the highlights in the eyes. So you have to be very careful of how you set it up. It, for me, I think it was really pretty much trial and error until I, I, I got it right. Let's have a look in the top view again and see what that looks like now that's a very very wide spread angle here oh wow okay. so it's, it's a very wide light uh and again it's a rectangle but one of the beauties of the specular light is that if you change it to a disc say for example the reflection becomes a disc a different shape mm -hmm. so let's let's create another camera yes and zoom right and, in so we can see it better yeah, that's a good idea yeah. so this should be a disc now Indeed. And you can even go ahead and if you wanted to have different shapes, you just create different yeah. shapes in either from a texture with a with an opacity map and uh, and add that to like a mesh there. Or you just create different three dimensional shapes <coughs> and make them light up so you could have a star, you could have a, a heart, yeah, or whatever yeah. you want. So it's just that's the part of being creative with light. And another thing with well. the rectangle is I mean we have a square here, but we could have let's see, uh Let's make that 300. Now we have an elongated rectangle. Yes, now we have a kind of a strip light. The, these are, are, are set up for you ready to use. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you just, again, have to turn the controller. I find one of the important things to do is to make sure that the light itself is pretty much coming from a, a similar direction to the main light. Now, obviously, this 
is turned more towards her face because if it was in exactly the same position as the Rembrandt light, we wouldn't see it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look fake. It look it looks quite realistic. I think. No, Let's absolutely, get rid of that. and it's Let's also get rid of that camera. getting uh, not having that catch light almost means there's something missing. So this really accentuates that little je ne sais quoi in her eyes, doesn't it? Oh, it brings the eyes to life. Absolutely, totally. You know. Mm. Now we put in um, a background light. Now that's not on a controller. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just basically a spotlight. There it is here. Mm -hmm. Just pointing at the background. You, you just play, play around with the spread angle and the luminous flux and the intensity, the luminous flux being the brightness. The intensity is kind of like more of a fine tuning of the brightness I find. So the, the only other thing that, that's left in this image is the rim light. Now, without the rim light, there's too much shadow going on in this area Indeed, here. This is like almost like a black hole in the scene. That's true. I just added in a rim light, which is just another spot. And of course, you know, with all these lights, you can change the colors, the color temperatures, and there's so much more you, you can actually do. I mean, th th this is a very straightforward setup. It's pretty much a photographic studio portrait. Mm -hmm. If we look at this in some of the other cameras that I, I, I've created, there's the mid-length view. Now you can see the main focus of the light is around her chest and her head and her left arm. The right side of her body is, is pretty dark. It's primarily been set up for the face. For the, mm -hmm. You wouldn't use lighting like that in full mm -hmm. length because yeah. the, the bottom half of her is just not illuminated enough.